Welcome back to Houston Life. Halloween brought our travel guy, Gabe Sagley, back to Ireland this year. That's where the holiday all started, of course, but it also inspired a new road trip through the Emerald Isle. Gabe joins us now from Ireland for a recap of what he says would be a premium destination for any road tripper in 2025. Gabe, two things. I love a road trip. This morning when I left yeah. my house here in Houston, it was already over 80 degrees. Looks like it's a little bit cooler there. Explain to us a little bit about your itinerary because I understand even though Halloween is over here in the States, it's continuing for the next few days there. The party continues, Derek, because this is, as you said, where it all began more than 2,000 years ago. Uh, yes, I'm in Trim, uh, and this is home to uh, a festival called Puka uh, that launched back in 2019, and I've been covering it every year, every year since it started uh, just about five years ago. Uh, it started last night. It'll go through this weekend. There's a big parade. This is a beautiful his historic town. So everybody comes and lines the streets for this big parade on Saturday. I will be a part of it. Uh, and of course, there are all kinds of activations. Uh, there's a big top with some big name acts. Uh, and of course, there's plenty of Halloween inspired activity uh, and thrill here. Uh, the Puka, by the way, a mythological creature that I think a lot of Irish kids may have grown up uh, knowing about, a sort of a mischievous creature you might stumble upon in the forest if you're out there late at night uh, during a fall evening. Uh, but she's inspired this very sort of kind of pagan inspired, but very Mardi Gras, Carnival inspired series of days known as Puka Festival. Now, just a few miles of where we are right now is the Hill of Ward. Uh, and this is a hill where, based on archaeological digs, Derek, and uh, the uh, carbon dating of remains found here, it's been decided that this is where the very first Halloween ceremonies, known as Samhain back then, would have been performed. Because back then, that was the end of the calendar year. Harvest was done, winter was coming, and October 31st represented that turn in the calendar. Uh, and also the night when the veil between this world and the next was at its thinnest, meaning that the propensity of spirits crossing over and spooking you, Derek, were at their highest. Now, as the Irish spread across the world in the uh, mid-1800s, those traditions followed them. And, of course, you and I celebrate these traditions like dressing up for Halloween, carving pumpkins and putting them on a windowsill. These were all things that were done to spook away these spirits. Uh, well, we celebrate them as Halloween today. My goodness, it's it's so interesting to see all of those costumes. Uh, very different than than here in the U.S. So, Gabe, I understand you're traveling with your son this holiday. The Halloween extended holiday is a perfect excuse to take a little road trip, and you're visiting something called yeah. the Wild Atlantic Way. Yeah, so this that's the thing. I think if you're a road tripper, you got to put Ireland on your to-do list for 2025. Some amazing road tripping opportunities, beginning with that Wild Atlantic Way. We landed on the west coast of Ireland, Shannon Airport, Dublin's all the way to the east. So we landed on the west coast of Ireland, and it, it's a stretch known as the Wild Atlantic Way, one of the longest driving routes in the world at about 15, 1,600 miles. Uh, and yeah, we had a, a variety of stops in the first couple of days, including the Burren, which is this wonderful landscape. Uh, back when the last ice age melted, those waters rushed through this limestone landscape and created this very sort of lunar uh, landscape out there. And people just love driving through this. It's sort of like otherworldly. And one of the great stops for me was this place here called the Iowa Cave, uh, where you can kind of dive into, uh, walk into about half a mile into this, into this mountain. Uh, you're seeing a, a cave discovered just a few decades ago, but it dates back 335 million years. Underwater, under, uh, underground waterfalls, uh, these wonderful stalagmite and stalactite formations. Just it's sort of a geological marvel. Uh, and again, a testament to that very long stretching history that exists here. They also have this wonderful birds of prey exhibit here. So you get to meet some of these wonderful falcons and owls and eagles there as well. Uh, you learn all about them. And you get to even handle them as well. I got to play with this wonderful little white owl, uh, which is, again, one of these many birds of prey that call this part of Ireland home. And then uh, my son and I moved over to Galway. Now, Galway, a city that a lot of folks watching probably know and love, known for its bo bohemian vibe, no known for its art scene. What I've been tracking over the last couple of years is its exploding food scene. So we took the Galway food tour uh, that took us through about six different locations, tasted some local mussels, some local uh, oysters, tasted some local gourmet coffee. Uh, we drank some local whiskey. Uh, it was just a wonderful way to uh, see just how in the last few years brand new chef talent
talent and really uh, increasingly leaning attention into uh, what grows regionally within just a couple of miles of this wonderful little city have created these wonderful little foodie venues uh, and just go, the folks at Galway Food Tours do a wonderful job at sort of p pointing out the ones that really do the best job at making you taste of really yummy things grown right there in uh, beautiful Galway. Oh my goodness. Wow, Gabe, what a cool trip. Hey, we're super tight on time. Tell us about Castles and uh, what's out there for Castle lovers. All right, so before I leave you, first of all, this is Trim Castle here. It dates back to 1172. Uh, it's about 45 minutes outside of Dublin, so it's a great day trip or it's a great place to come here and, uh, and sort of dive into this great history. There are more than 400 castles across Ireland. Some of them are beautiful places to stay. Uh, I love Ashford Castle to the south, which is this gorgeous five-star castle that now is a beautiful hotel. Uh, but one of the places that we visited uh, just a couple of days ago is Donegal Castle. It dates back to the late 1400s, owned by the same family over many years. Uh, just uh, about uh, 30 years ago, it was taken over by uh, the Public Works folks, and they've uh, revamped it, sort of re uh, renovated it, but you still get maintain that beautiful old historic charm there. If you're a history buff, then I think arranging a road trip around some of these castles is a no-brainer. Also, another one that's on the to-do list has got to be Kilkenny Castle. Uh, Kilkenny is a wonderful city, medieval city. Uh, Kilkenny Castle, right in the heart of town, along the river there. It dates back to uh, the late 11th hundreds so an amazing amount of history purportedly haunted by the way but they do do these wonderful daily tours that give you the history uh, and give you some wonderful historic color that brings this wonderful medieval city to life i'm a big fan of castles and wonderful history here a wonderful throwback to a bygone era but super accessible thanks to the fact that you can sort of drive around the country drive around this island and visit so many of them uh, over the course of just a few days oh my goodness gabe it is so beautiful and i know for uh the whiskey lovers there are some distilled for beer lovers that got that too. We're out of time though. Gabe no Zaglier. one goes thirsty here. No, no one, one goes thirsty, thirsty in Ireland. That <laughs> is true. I can confirm. Thanks so much. Have a great road trip with your son. All right, buddy. See Good you soon. To, see you. to connect with Gabe and learn more about his Ireland travel guide, look for the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv.